on this side of the map, which is thematically important because this up here is a forest and this up here is a mountain. These are not developed areas. They're just one track. It's the only way to get out there is to walk all the way along. This down here is a developed area. There's a freeway, there are suburbs, there's a city. These tunnels are under the city. The fact that you have more mobility down here with the form of these tunnels, I think was important and thematic. Uh, one of a handful of things that Victory Point either didn't appreciate or didn't realize what they were losing, uh, it's mystifying to me, that they screwed the map up by taking the tunnels out. Now, it wouldn't help me in this turn. What I would love to do is be able to get someone here by the end of the turn to benefit from this uh, research discovery. I'm not going to be able to do it for many reasons, mainly, and the tunnels have nothing to do with it, the lack of tunnels, mainly because these chaos places, you stop anytime you get to chaos. There's a dog named Pickles, one of the heroes. He can move through chaos. I don't have Pickles. So there's pretty much no way, short of a news helicopter, which is a fake card, there are some vehicles that move you around, I could get to the university this turn. If I had a helicopter, I'd definitely fly there. Well, except for those zombies. So at any rate, that's kind of sad. We're not going to be able to take advantage of that. Let's uh, just see what happens, though. So first of all, uh, during the 4R phase, Rangers, Rescuers, Raiders, and Refugees. We have no more Refugees on the board. These are, def oh, no, no, we, we do. Doop. Uh, these are Defiant Villain. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah, five of them. So hospital, fleeing, okay, good. So during the 4R phase, we must move one refugee. Now, Bubba's band comes into play. <clears throat> so here, do they add infection? Those jerks, I bet they do. Let me just check, Raiders, Raiders, 23. I bet those jerks are gonna add infection. Uh, 23, movers here, Raiders. You must move Raiders one space towards town center, resolve hand to hand. These special units fight every unit they encounter except for refugees slash villagers, right, which they ignore. When they fight Zeds, they count as a player unit, right? When they fight your units, they count as Zeds unit, all right? Um, uh, all right. I don't know where I'm seeing. Would they add infection? Also, do they clean up chaos? No, that would make no sense. Well, it just says when they fight Zeds, they count as a player unit. Oh, on the combat table. That doesn't imply that the infection track treats them as a player unit. Uh, let's check. It says look at the dossier. I doubt it would be in the dossier. Let's just look, actually. So they are special unit. Bubba's band. We are looking in the lore pamphlet known as the Farmingdale Dossier. Bubba's Band. Special Raiders. Ah, here we go. Uh, the Special Raiders unit represents a psychotic group of people led by former heavy metal guitarist Bubba DiNardo of the famous death metal band Schnitzel Blitz, in case you were wondering. So it goes in the start space, it moves, it gets a one column shift in its benefit. Um, here we go. If both Bubba's band and other raiders appear, all right. The other one enters hand in combat with, oh shoot. And it just says when they're fighting other raiders, which they'll do, they don't increase infection. Which makes me think when they fight zombies, they do increase infection. Let me just check real quick the rules on infection in combat. Infection is page 20 and 21. Uh, Infection. Infection value is increased. There's a whole list of everything. Each time a hand-to-hand -hand combat occurs, regardless of who initiated it, it says each time a hand-to-hand -hand combat occurs, which makes me think that applies to raiders. Uh, I think it's going to hit me. Eh. Each time a hand-to-hand -hand combat occurs. Yeah. Normally I might look a little deeper, uh, but I'm pretty sure I recall reading. All right, that's going to go up there. Uh, Bubba is going to tussle with this five strength zombie. So that is human advantage. 
one column shift, so double human advantage here. And hopefully they take a lot of hits. Roll really low. I like that. So double human advantage, a three, gives them, everybody takes two hits and the zombies retreat. All right, I like that. So two hits there. Actually, this is perfect. And then Bubba DiNardo's band, look here, takes one hit and only, and this comes off and they flip and they're now down to strength three. Hopefully they'll move in there before any zombies advance. What's going to activate this track? The highway track. All right. Uh, all right. Haha, ha, Bubba DiNardo's band. Uh, good. So that was the 4R stage. We now move to infection. We are at six. On a six or lower, we have an outbreak. Yikes, yeah, that was close to seven. Uh, we now move to eating. We have to eat one supply. We are now out of food. And now the highway track in, uh, activates, which means these guys coming in here, that's one infection. Uh, I like fighting Daryl, and he is tough. He can shrug off hits. Is he tough or rugged? I think Daryl, excuse me, I think Rusty, you know what, I'm just going to call him Daryl. I think Daryl is rugged, so he'll shrug off a hit on a four or five. Uh, but you know the odds are so good. So it's human advantage. It's a two column shift. It's always the case in uh, these town areas uh, that surround the town center. So all told, that is human times, wait, human advantage, two column shift is human times three. So it's the most advantage, advantageous column for us. Let's get a nice high number. Eh, not as high as I would have liked. Still, uh, so one hit for uh, Daryl, three hits for these guys. So that would be place the heart, flip it for double, remove it to get rid of these guys. And Daryl is going to take one hit and flip to this side, whereas hand to hand is great, but his crossbow is weakened, unless he can shrug off the hit with a five or six. Didn't do it. All right, Daryl is injured. But look, we've cleared off this track. Ooh, actually, we can start advancing and securing that. I'm liking the way this is going. Uh, all right, now we get two actions. At the end, if we could get someone here, we'd get free research. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, our supplies are dwindling, and people are going to start getting hurt if we can't feed them. All right, check this out. Do that to move these guys back to the farm. Mm, they don't have any special foraging. We really are. Actually, Daryl's great at foraging. No, we're going to clean that track out first. Because remember, when there's an outbreak, it out, it, it's an outbreak at the closest chaos marker. If there's no chaos marker, at a village. So if we clear this here, any outbreaks on the highway track will be here instead of here, and we can use that. And by the way, even if we clear the chaos here, any outbreak occurs in the village, which is that. So there's kind of almost no point clearing that. Although look, one, two, oh, they're pokey. It's going to take them two turns. Yeah. All right, so uh, that was WZD, moved them there. We don't want to weaken these guys because we want Bubba to run into them and get hurt. I almost wonder if it's worth pulling him back to heal him. No, all right, let's spend one action to move him here. Did I forget to do this last turn? I think I did. Um, one, zero, two, three, four. Can she go five or four? No, she only goes four. All right, we're doing that. Uh, I feel like we could do this healing just to move the infection track back. Since we're out of supplies and ammo, we are going to have to do some foraging. <clears throat> so getting supplies will keep people from taking hits. So we're going to do that. With Mayor Hernandez is plus one for the keys to the city. These guys are now going to forage at the farm. So a five gives them one supply. A six would have given them two. Um, Deputy Schmidt will forage at St. Thomas, which will give us no more than one supply. Wait, is that right? Yeah, no more than one supply, so he gets plus one. That's a four, which gives us one supply. That was his initiative. And then we have one more action. Should we go ahead and try 
for research. It'd be so nice to be able to start getting super weapon bonuses. <laughs> we have no ammo. Let's do it. We're trying for research. All right. On a five or six, she gets plus one. I'm pretty sure that is not cocked. Yep. Uh, there we go. Now, hall half turning. What? Well, this is the current research card. All Zed's outbreaks automatically reset the infection level to two, rather than the die roll, which can set it down to less than two. All right, I like that. Uh, and relatively easy to get from this to the late research part of the deck, which looks good. Nice work, Professor Ag. Uh, and that was that, correct? That was my last action. Uh, move, forage, research. That's three generic. Yeah, we're good. All right. Oh, wait. Mm, did I? No, we're good because uh, he went forward. And I could have, I would have liked to have brought him up, but we'll do that later with another action. All right, anyway, we're, we're done, we're good. All right, unflip these. Now we're in the third act. Partway through the third act, again, because it is scripted entirely, it is completely canned, it's always 10 from the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, six. After six actions, the National Guard is going to arrive, and they are a super badass unit with a strength of 10. Uh, they use up a lot of ammo to shoot, but uh, they work their way up to the town center, uh, and then you can move them around and punch zombies. Uh, but we have to make our way through here. It looks like we might make it, actually. All right. Anyway, we know that's waiting for us. We're now in the third act. Of these cards, there are... Uh, wait, are, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there are nine third act cards. This is one of them. Three of these are cards like brains, uh, things that will really be bad news for us. So let's see what we get. Not one of them. Fast Zeds, though, aren't good. Uh, so fast Zeds are just going to move super fast. <clears throat> the beginning of the Zeds phase, put a new Zeds on the forest track. They always start in the forest track. That's interesting. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, and then place the fast Zeds marker on the strongest regular Zeds unit. Place a new Zeds unit on the forest track start space. Then place the fast marker on the strongest regular Zeds unit. In the forest space or anywhere? It doesn't say on the forest space. It's a separate number one. Place this. Number two, something that doesn't apply because we're not playing a stupid versus game. And number three, place the fast marker on the strongest regular Zeds unit. It doesn't say on the, uh, on the forest track. Uh, let's just check the dossier real quick. It may not be in there. So that's clearly a wording issue. If we were to read it, uh, if we were to play the rules as written, it would be on the whole board. Um, fast Zeds. I don't even know if those bonus Zeds markers are in here. No, they're not. As near as I can tell. Fast, here we go. Marker makes a regular Zeds move two spaces. Fair enough. Uh, fast Zeds will move forward twice. We know that. Wait, Fast Zeds might be a Super Zed. Actually, no, they're not. Although those guys, the werewolves are, or the werezeds are fast. Uh, it does not say, so we're just going to go with the rules as written and not necessarily put them on the, the forest track. So the first thing we do, uh, well, it's just part of the regular turn. When we get to the zeds phase, we'll do all that. First thing we do is the 4R phase. Uh, these refugees move in closer. And then Bubba DiNardo's band bumps into these guys. So it is even. Zeds are three, Bubba Nardo's three. Bubba Nardo gets a one column shift, so it's human advantage. A seven, right down the middle. Should fair, share the hits. Uh, two hits for the zombie, one hit for the human. And the zombies flee. Uh, oh, two hits for the zombie goes one, and then take it off two. Yeah, so we, they killed him. Uh, thank you, Bubba DiNardo. And then one hit for the humans. That goes there. Uh, when they take one more hit, they'll be dead. Oh, and that caused infection. Uh, so they'll bump up against these guys. There's a barricade. I'm happy to leave that. Oh, no, look, this is awesome. <laughs> so that was the 4R phase. Stand by for the zombie activation phase. For the infection phase, we are at 9. 
I predict an infection this turn. No, there, oh yes, there is. So exactly nine, we, oh man, did we just get screwed by this? While this is the current research, all Zed's outbreaks automatically reset the infection level to two. <laughs> it would have normally gone to zero, but no, because of our half turning, it goes to two. Uh, now, we've had an infection. Uh, let's then see where, uh, if we had an outbreak, let's see where it takes place. We do a fate draw. Infected vermin, ugh. So we just got rid of Noel Razor, and now we've got another disease spreader. So first of all, highway is uh, where we get an outbreak. So on the highway, oh shoot, that's where Daryl is. No, she, okay, <laughs> uh, I forgot to lift this at the beginning of last turn. This comes off, infection would have gone up one, so it would have been at 10 when we rolled. At any rate, it goes down to two. Uh, uh, and he's there, so now they're gonna show up here, the, the closest chaos marker on the highway. Whew, that was close, I thought he was gonna get jumped. Didn't we have another one? No, no other chaos markers, we forgot to clear. All right, here we go. At Ingberg, we have some fours that reduce to twos. Okay, I'm okay with that. Uh, all right, so that was the outbreak on the highway. Um, good. That was the infection phase. We will eat a supply. Oh, wait, we have to resolve this. We'll take this and just put that on uh, there to show that's where we are. Place the infermin, uh, the infected vermin standee, some gross rats, on the start space of the track where there are the most units, Zed's units. And it's the same as Noel Hell Razor, except that it's strength two, and it only takes one hit. And it's where there are the most, yeah, okay, so where there are the most infected, uh, Zeds of any type. <clears throat> one, 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 two, three. So that's another reason because we don't have these tunnels. Look at how nearly impossible it's going to be to get down in the infected vermin. I like how thematic that is, though, that they're in the tunnels. One. All right, so clearly the infected vermin go into the tunnels. I wish there was some, if you flip it, nah. <clears throat> is there some reminder we can put there to show, yeah, you know, let's just use one of these. There, to remind us that there is a bonus or an additional infection hit. Uh, all right, so those guys showed up as soon as they leave that track. I'm not gonna put it there because it's not until they get off of the start space that that applies. Uh, all right, so that was the infection phase. We had an outbreak. Uh, the fate card then put the infected vermin in play. Now we are going to check supplies. <clears throat> we have one, two refugees to feed. We don't have to. We still retain our last supply. Um, good. So Zeb's activation phase. Here's what's hilarious. Uh, the forest track activates and it's going to activate twice. Oh, wait. I had to put the fast Zeb's out. Did I skip that? No, 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 right, I do it now, right. At the beginning of this phase, place a new Zed's unit on the forest track. I'm mixing these up. Those are all super Zed's, here's all regular Zed's. All right, here we go. I am finger shuffling, I am not looking, and I am drawing this guy. A three, nice weak one, man, I'm doing great with draws. Uh, on the start of the forest track, and now, we activate, no, no, first we then, now we place the fast marker on the strongest regular Zed's unit anywhere on the board. So where did I go? All right, so the strongest Zed's unit. We have a six, another six. Is there anything better than a six? I think the six is our strongest unit. Uh, so we have a six here and a six here whenever to tie its player's choice. Hmm. I feel like I almost don't mind these guys rushing up double speed. Uh, although, I don't, eh. 
Yeah, they're going to connect with a mob and just snowball over here. So we're just going to go ahead and make these the fast Zeds. And look, they wear a little hat. All right, so those are our fast Zeds. Now we activate the forest space twice. So watch this. Uh, hopefully they get in the last hit. There's once. Let's activate them again. Ha ha. All right, so infection goes up. So we have a three to an eight which is not quite triple, but it is double zombie advantage. With the one column favorable shift for Bubba DiNardo, it is zombie advantage and not double zombie advantage. All right, I hope they hurt each other a lot. Nice middling number. Six, let's see. Uh, zombie advantage, a six. Yeah. One point damage to the zombie, three to the humans. So Bubba DiNardo is dead. Nice work. They bumped into zombies. Did I screw that up though, by the way? I was supposed to put them on the space with the fewest Zeds. How did they end up somewhere with two Zeds? I hope I didn't break the game. Do I need to put another one of these out? Uh, maybe, I don't think so. Uh, all right, and then the zombies get one hit. Let's definitely apply that hit here. And they're a much more manageable six strength mob. All right, that now was their activation phase. We have two actions, all these are flipped. I really want this card. Uh, this track looks good. This track looks good. We don't have any ammo. I'd love to bring him up here. That track looks good. This could go to hell. I mean, sorry, I don't mean it can go to hell like being dismissive. I mean, it could go to hell like fall apart. Uh, Daryl should really come back. Either that or build a barricade, which we're not going to do with these supplies. Hmm. All right, let's... All right, we're going to spend one action to move him here. I should put a reminder just there because at the end of the phase, we have to remember to clear out this place. Uh, let's use Deputy Schmidt. I can't fire his gun. Uh, man, these guys have been defiant for a long time. To forage. So this plus one. Ah, good. Uh, so that is just one food because he wasn't foraging any place special. Oh, no, it's not. It's a bullet. Yeah, a six for a non-specific named space is a bullet. I'm okay with that, though. Um, uh, emergency broadcast for civilians. Let's forest forage here. So it's this plus one. Yeah. Uh, now, we've got two regular actions. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. Four, five, or six, it's plus one because Professor Adji gets a plus one. Got it. Here we go. We're into late research. Of these, five, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two of them are just random things. One of them is some sort of a cure, we discover. And then one, two, three, and then four of them are super weapon components. Normally, I'm going to have to uncover this now. Super weapons go... You have to overlap our survivors here. We'll make sure you can see all their pictures, though. Uh, one of the things I wish they'd done is put their movement rate, even though they're mostly, you know, actually their movement rates are pretty consistent. It's four. I think the dog goes five. There's a ninja chick named Alyssa Darling. I think she goes five. Uh, five spaces. This is our super weapon. When we discover it, or if we do, we're going to put an icon here, and then improvements that we choose uh, can get uh, icons or, or, or markers around here. So, uh, Hernandez is a Citadel thing. <clears throat> uh, here we go, let's flip. We made a research roll, and our research is a science hero arrives. Place a new random available science, science hero in the town center. Mm, all right. So, let's go through the heroes, science heroes. Uh, that means Zeno Jones. I actually like him. He can eat refugees. Um, to uh, people in the hospital to get a free research. Alyssa Darling, not science. Doc Seaver, great for healing. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. All right, so a new random... Now let's just roll a die. One, two, three is Zeno Jones. Four, five, six is uh, Doc Seaver. 
Zeno Jones, welcome to the team. I'm actually okay with that. So he can, let's just double check, Zeno Jones. He also gets a free action. I do like that a lot. Uh, his own agenda. It's like Deputy Schmidt's initiative. Uh, so he can be moved. He can show up in the either hospital or the lab. He can basically teleport uh, from the hospital lab to, oh, no, well, to any space on the board. Uh, this ability is called Where Did He Go? It's some teleportation thing. Previously, we might have been able to use that to get to the university. That's not going to help us now. Uh, his own agenda gives him a free marker. His gun eats supplies instead of ammo. And when he's in the hospital staff, he can spend his agenda marker to move one unit from a hospital bed to the cemetery to turn over a free research card. But also, he is a nice 4-3 combat unit. All right, so, <clears throat> so that's the only research we can do this round. Uh, we now have a player action in Zeno Jones's action. I'm tempted to move him in the hospital and eat those guys. We can't do another free research this turn. Um, or forage, right? Yeah, he could forage in the town center. Let's see if we can get into the farm. Hmm. This movement is just four. One, two, three, four. All right, I think we're just going to have him forage because this could really hurt us. Although I can just see us bopping people in and out of the, the hospital. All right, Zeno Jones is going to forage at plus one. A six in the town center means we get a food or a bullet. Let's take a food. That was Zeno Jones. And then we have another free player action. Uh, have these guys forage in the farm. So plus one, and they did nothing. They did bupkis. All right, we flip these over, and we go check another card. But as I know, because I put this little marker here, we first have to resolve chaos spaces. So this adds one infection, and it unchaoses East Iric. And we are now uh, have seven of these off of the board. All right, new card. This is a uh, Act Three. National Guard Helicopter Strike. I love this. We're going to get to apply hits to some random above space ground. Uh, first, though, the refugee turn for R. That happens. We don't have Bubba DiNardo out anymore. Uh, two dice for infection. It is a nice manageable four. No outbreak. Uh, we don't eat anything. We're going to advance the suburbs and the highway. Or activate, I should say. So we activate the suburbs and watch this. One, two, because remember, they're fast. I'm going to flip over to four. Uh, she'll be able to fire at them. That's good. Uh, and this is a space with a terrain shift. And then let's now activate the highway track. One. There we go. We get three actions. This is the beginning of the turn. At the beginning of the phase, designate one above ground Zed's unit, meaning not in the tunnel, or Zed's mob. Uh, on a non-start space and roll a die. It's basically one to three hits. One and two is one hit, three and four is two hits, five and six is three hits. Hits are applied to the designated Z zone. All right, so the National Guard, we're gonna get three units, by the way. Where do they wanna shoot? I think here is where we want a National Guard helicopter strike, right? It's an eight versus a four. It would drop it down to, from Z's double to Z's advantage. That, um, we can't helicopter strike in the tunnels, of course. Yeah, let's do a, Z, a strike here. So this divided by two, so two hits. Yeah, of course, I should know by now. Uh, let's see, five to three and three to two. So let's, of course, put the two hits on the five. All right, nice uh, helicopter strike from the National Guard. Thank you, National Guard. Now, if you'd please hurry up and arrive on the premise, we could use your assistance. <coughs> Look at all these actions. Oh my gosh, we have so much we can do this round. All right, uh, let's see. This is a pain. We should probably fire into that group. This we need to do something about. Either pull him back, bring up some defenders. He can fire without spending ammo, but his strength is down to two for his crossbow because he's damaged. Let's see, gunfire on two, you need an eight or nine to do anything. It's Hardly worth spending the action. 
Uh, I think we might put Daryl in the hospital. One, two, three, and then move in here for free, and then four into the hospital. It's one action. And then we can heal to flip him over like that and reduce the infection. Let's do that. I'm almost thinking move him back out. <laughs> uh, although we're doing fine with chaos, let them come up here. Oh, is this a good move? Shoot, all right, well, we're gonna fire this. She gets a plus one shift, so on the five column, we're firing these fast Zeds. A seven on the five column, I think it's gonna be two hits. Yeah, two hits there. Uh, we have no ammo left. Uh, all right, for his own agenda, let's have Zeno. Should we flip a research card by eating those guys? So here we have to roll a five or six and spend a supply, which I'm not happy about doing. You know, Zeno Jones is gonna do an insidious thing called human testing. While he's in the, oh, he has to move. While he's in a hospital, uh, he can spend his action, his own agenda, to move one unit in a hospital bed to the cemetery. I kind of wish these crappy civilians here would get into the uh, hospital beds. Because they spend fewer points. This is three points, though. Uh, should I charge these guys into battle? Well, at any rate, he's using his own agenda. We'll do this. We can do this later to move into there. We will later be experimenting on people. All right. So regular civilians, some of you hurry up and get uh, injured. All right. So we have emergency broadcast. Let's go ahead and forage in the farm plus one because of the mares oh good so that gives us two food two supplies um deputy schmidt hmm let's do this use this player action to have them forage at the security guard post they get plus one uh so that's a five which is just one ammo is that right yeah and deputy schmidt uh, yeah, Deputy Schmidt is now going to spend his initiative to fire uh, into here. So a four-column gunfire. A nine looks good. That could be three hits. Four, a nine, no, is only two hits. So take that off one and then add one. So there's two hits. All right, that looks good. Uh, that was our turn. We unflip everything. We don't have anyone in a chaos space, do we, that has to be unchaosed? Uh, all right, good. Here we go. Third act. Oh, shoot. Yeah, yeah, good. Elwood Barra arrives in the hospital. <laughs> all right, we have an icon for him. So at the beginning of the action phase, uh, we'll put him on the infection marker. Uh, and then at the housekeeping phase, at the final turn, he's going to move this down. There are lots of cards that kill him, though. But he's in the hospital. Uh, he's going to be reducing our infection, which is awesome. That's great. Uh, first, though, we get two moves in this thing here. Uh, the refugee, raiders, rescuers, and... Refugees, raiders, rescuers, and... Rangers. <laughs> I keep forgetting rangers. They're such a specific unit. <clears throat> I mean, why aren't the rangers rescuers? Uh, there's nothing else. Oh, we could have him teleport somewhere during the 4R phase. Uh, we don't really need to do that. He is waiting for someone to get hurt so we can spend them on research. I'm not above that. I'm happy to do that. Uh, let's now go to the infection phase. Uh, yep, the rats aren't in play yet, so this doesn't move up. A five does not cause an outbreak. Uh, eat is zero. We activate, and the tunnel's gonna activate, so those rats are gonna come into play. First, we activate the forest, though. Here we go, we have a six attacking a four. That is zombie advantage. Uh, and it is two column shifts in our favor because of the barricade, and one column shift in our favor because of Deputy Schmidt uh, being an Eagle Scout. So it adds an infection. So we go from zombie advantage, so that's advantage, Two column shift for the barricade puts it in human advantage. One column shift for Schmidt being an Eagle Scout puts it in human advantage times two. Nice high roll. 
Mm, you can do better with an eight. I like that. Zero hits for the human, three hits for the zombies. So let's go one, two, three. Uh, these guys are not undefiant until the space is actually invaded. Uh, all right, that was activating the force. Now we activate the tunnels. All right, let's see if these guys get out of the catacombs and overrun the security post. So a four means they stay in play. Uh, so they stay in place. Let's see if these guys get out of the catacombs and go into Dr. Martus's office. A six means they're lost, which could be bad news, because remember last time some guys got lost there, they appeared here. We roll a d6. If we roll a five, the space they're currently on, they're uh, lost forever. We want a five. Sweet, and that's totally not cocked. I can do that, yeah. All right, these guys are lost, ha uh ha. -huh. Uh, and then these advance, so one, two, one because these are where Zeds, and they add two infection during hand-to-hand -hand combat. There are fives that go to threes. Now, we have two actions, and we start by putting Elwood Barra, where did he go, right here, on the infection marker. At the end of every turn, it's going to scooch infection down one. We like that a lot. We get two actions and all of these. Uh, I got a really good feeling about this game. Okay. Daryl, get out there with your free shot. So we have no ammo. Uh, so a four against these fast Zeds, a nice high number. That is a 12, which is awesome. On the four column, a 12 is three hits. So we take that off one and then add two, three. All right, so fast Zeds with four, we will let them bang themselves up against these defenses and hopefully die. Uh, all right, now we have all of these. Um, Zeno, do we dare go ahead and spin that? I'm going to do it. Forget points. I feel like if we can just get through here, if, we can get, if it gets us through three more cards, we break even. So Zeno has now used these guys for some sort of insidious testing. And here's our next research. Antidote breakthrough. If the final component is, this is basically a delayed thing. So if the final component is not in the lab, place the final comp component marker in the lab. No, where's the lab? There. Uh, and then shuffle this card back into the research deck. The next time this comes up, then this flips over and we have now cured the zombie outbreak. Uh, when we have the antidote in play, what happens when the antidote is in play? I think it makes special things happen uh, to uh, like certain the super weapons and stuff like that. Uh, it certainly gives her the ability to reduce infection considerably when she clears out chaos spaces. All right, so that's basically a card that has to come up twice. And it's now come up once. Uh, and we eat, ate some refugees for that to happen. Uh, all right, Deputy Schmidt. Just let these guys die normally. Uh, have him forage, because he's not going anywhere. Plus one, a four gives us in a non-named in namespace a supply. Then uh, the emergency broadcasters, you guys forage. Uh, yeah, these guys can't respond to the emergency broadcaster network, uh, but these guys can, and they will forage here. Mm, yeah. A two plus one is three, so that's nothing. And then finally, for a player action, let's move Mr. Johnson into the university. Maybe later there'll be some uh, fine research for us. All right, that was that state. That was that uh, turn. Uh, here we go, act three. I don't like, there's a bunch of uh, special cards in here, and there's one of them, brains. So, brains, we don't get to do anything. All the tracks are going to activate once. Do we actually... Uh, are the brains cards different? I'm not sure. At any rate, it adds two to the... Oh, Elwood Bear at the end of the last turn would have done that. Brains adds two to the infection. I thought the other one was three. Is this a reduced brains? Uh, the first brains did add three. So the Act 3 brains only adds two infection. So all tracks activate um, after activating the turn is over. And if they win a combat, they move a second, they move forward a second time. Uh, so I just go in order from the mines. These guys start first, they activate. Let's see if they find their way out. A one, 
uh, is move normally, right? Yeah, they move normally. So a three against a three with a one shift. So it's even one point for the human. So it is human advantage. Infection goes up. E, that does not look good. Um, human advantage two, three hits to the human and they uh, retreat. So one, two, three, they come off. Maybe they'll give, I'd love them if they would go to the hospital and give Zeno Jones someone to, uh, research, to do his research on. One, two, three, they go in the graveyard. Four, five, six, they're in the hospital. Sweet. Sorry, guys, but uh, guess what's going to happen to you? <clears throat> All right, and they advance. Because this is a brain stage, anytime they have a successful melee, they advance a second time. And this gets a chaos marker. All right, continuing to activate, and we're doing this to all the tracks, uh, these wear rats. Let's see what they do. Normally they go two spaces. They will double the infection for hand-to-hand -hand combat. A four means they remain in place. I quite like that. Uh, and these guys advance one. Uh, all right, let's go around here. Uh, they advance one. There's no hand-to-hand -hand combat, but they cause uh, chaos at the uh, nuclear power plant uh, coming on around here. Uh, they advance a four against a three is a Z advantage with two shifts in favor of the humans. And no matter what, the VFW do not retreat. So Z advantage, two shifts gives us human advantage. Nice high number is not what I rolled. A six is uh, two losses on either side, the Z's retreat. So take this off one. Oh, shoot. They were supposed to heal. Have I been doing that? Well, at any rate, they only had the one on them, so take that off. So now they take two damage, so that is what happens. Uh, maybe they hadn't activated. Well, at any rate, they only heal when they activate. Uh, and this take this the VFW takes two hits. So we put one, we remove it, and we flip them to their two side. Uh, all right. I should send somebody to come shoot these guys. Uh, so that was, oh, no, no, we keep going around. Brains, uh, so they, no, they retreated. I'm not clear. They actually did lose that combat. They weren't retreated. So because they didn't win a hand-to-hand -hand combat, they don't keep moving. What if they had won and retreated? I don't know. Something I don't have to look up now. Uh, coming around here to the forest track, we have a three to a four. That is human advantage with three shifts. So we're going to have human advantage times three. I think I didn't do that for that. And there, so I moved that up two for that combat in that one. Uh, a nine, yeah, uh, a nine with human advantage times three is three hits on the zombies. So one, keep calling them zombies, they're Zeds, two, three. Uh, they didn't win, so they don't keep advancing. And then finally, the suburbs track, you guys, uh, we have a four against, who do they want to fight? Let's have them fight Agent Wright. Um, these guys are both rugged. Yeah, Agent Wright. So uh, four to four is equal advantages. One shift in favor of the humans is human advantage. Oh, yikes. Three hits to the human. All right, so Agent Wright, who uh, took quite a bit of damage before, uh, let's see if she can shrug off with her ruggedness three hits. So on a five or six, she shrugs off the hit. That's one hit. Five or six, she shrugs off the hit. That's two hits. All right, one, two, three, she's in the graveyard. Four, five, six, she's in a hospital bed. All right, Agent Wright, sorry, we hardly knew ye. Uh, it's our first player character casualty. I'm just gonna put that there. Agent Wright has died. Uh, now, they won. This is going to get messy. So anybody in this space has to retreat. Now, because it's a brains stage, they advance again because they won a melee combat. So four to four, which is equal infection, uh, a two column shift because now we're in suburbia, which is part of the town. So equal goes to human advantage, goes to double human advantage. Here we go. Nice high number. A nine looks good to me. A nine is zero hits for the human, three for the zombie. They can only take one more hit anyway. So there go the fast zombies. Uh, this, as soon as they enter, gets a chaos space. 
Uh, all right, so that has gone all the way around. That is brains activation. You don't do anything else on brains. You then flip another card. And it, oh, how is that fair? Fortunately, I think we're in a good position to withstand it. Yeah. All right, so first of all, we raise the infection. Oh, here's the mild brains. Only one. So we're not going to have an unchecked outbreak yet. I predict that will happen this turn. Uh, all tracks activate. Everybody moves one space. I think I did. No, no, okay. Everybody moves one space, and then anybody who wins a melee combat moves another space. So let's see if the Where's Eds get out of the catacombs. A one means they do. So a five to four. So first of all, two infection. This is going to uh, put us up to the unchecked outbreak stage. Once this combat is resolved, we will then add a super Z. So a five to four is Z advantage. With a one column shift, it is even advantage. Mm, seven is not nearly as high as I would have liked. Uh, so everybody takes two hits and the Zs retreat. So one, two to the Zs and take it off one, flip them, add it two. Uh, they did not win, so they don't keep advancing. Uh, we do, oh, shoot a monkey. When did that happen? All right, so they advance one. Did I miss them last turn? I don't know. No, 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 because they hit the guards and then advanced, right? Okay, so they advanced one. They didn't win a combat. If someone had been here, they could have moved forward. Uh, normally, if they advance, if they activate again, anytime they're here and they activate, you lose the game. But because of the clarion call, Clarion Call, what are they? The Clarion Courier is in play. We can actually fight a battle to defend the town center. We'd have to pick a unit. Look at all these ones in play. Uh, so at any rate, they go there. They don't advance a second time. They tried to advance. They fell back. They advance. They are now in the catacombs. Uh, all right, so coming around the board, we now have them. They did not win a melee battle. Here, a four versus two. That is double Zed's advantage. Uh, but a two-column shift puts it in even advantage. Oh, shoot, we have to add our, our uh, Super Z. All right, so we draw. Let's put this on this track to show that we're resolving that. Actually, just to be safe, it was this combat that did it there. So that guy is there, technically, when we're now bringing the Super Z into play. Um, we'll just put that to remind us that's where we pick it up where we left off. All right, we roll two dice. That thing is not in play anymore that puts it automatically at two. This is the amount that the infection track is reduced. I'm happy with that. Uh, now, let's draw a Super Z. Oh, well, let's first find out where the Super Z is going to come into play. Uh, I like this adrenaline supply discovered. Uh, suburbs. All right. I'm finger shuffling in the ball of Super Zs, and I'm drawing... What are those guys? Oh, Leapers. It's kind of weird. Uh, you never get a terrain shift bonus with leapers, and if they ever enter a space with a barricade, they destroy it, and they go from four to two. Now, where do these guys apply? Where do they Where do they come into play? Here? No. The closest town? No. The closest chaos marker. Hmm. We haven't activated that track. Will we be activating? I need to look up. So when you actually add them to the track, like if we had activated this track first, that is a little unfair. Let, let me just look up activate. I'm sure this is spelled out somewhere. Uh, activate. Let's try page seven. Pretty early in the rule book. Activate. Um... Faint now, okay. Mm, that is not right. It's not on page seven, this whole activate thing. I uh, dispute the this index. Did I look in the wrong place? Let me check again. Index, uh, activate. A Zed's unit says page seven. Also page eight. To move the player unit. Let's... Zed's phase. Here we go. Let's look up. Uh, All right, when you activate a track, Zed's Fades Procedure. 
All right, examine the zips can activate the first track listed. All right. Although we are actually looking under outbreak to see if they move the turn they come out. Let me just skim real quick through activate. Move the next closest. All right, it doesn't look like there's anything at this point about don't activate a guy you just added. Let me go to Outbreak, which I think by memory I recall is on page 20. Outbreak procedure, determined on the faded track where they go, place a Zeds unit. If there's no chaos space, place new Zeds. Fight or devour. If there's no Zeds. Hmm. If you were a game designer, would you make it where something that gets placed in that turn can also be activated? I mean, I guess why not? I just got unlucky in the order that I was activating tracks, right? Uh, yeah, you would think that if there was some rule where you do not activate a Z placed that turn, it would be listed under the outbreak procedure, right? Let me just double check that it's not. Again, this is a facet of solitaire board gaming, is the time spent looking up a rule, especially something complex like this. Um, when you activate each track, all right, move each Zs, and then there are two asterisks referring to uh, disease spreaders, that doesn't help. Uh, if there's more than one Z, move it one space in order. Complete actions triggered before proceeding to the next closest Z unit. All right. If the space is full, okay. The next, okay. Examine the heads of the current. Repeat all tracks. All. Okay. I don't think there's anything here about once he's been placed, I don't have to activate him. That turn. Oh, here we go. Z unit that are newly placed during an activation. That, oh, will move during that activation only if they appear on a space farther from town center than the Zed's unit that moved most recently. What? Well, I haven't moved that track yet. This is because their space would still come up for movement. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. So what it's saying is that if something up here caused a Zed to be placed back here on this track, this space has already been activated. But because this happened over here and I haven't gotten around to this track, these guys that I just placed, they are going to activate. So I just got unlucky with the fate draw. Or lucky because I can hold this later and use adrenaline for two more actions. All right, so uh, now these guys activate and go there. We've resolved our unchecked outbreak. It added these leapers. They are going to leap on Daryl a.k.a. Rusty Staub, and Daryl won't get a, a terrain shift because they are leapers uh, or death from above attacks, as, as the, the lore says. All right, so there we go. In this brain stage, we've activated the tunnels. Let's work our way around here. Now we are activating this, the highway track, uh, coming closer to downtown. Let's activate the mountain track. We have a four versus a two, which is the double Z advantage. But with a two-column shift, it is an equal advantage. And for what it's worth, the VFW never retreats. So a five on equal does not bode well. One hit for the Zed, two for the humans. So normally they would uh, retreat, but they never retreat. So these guys retreat, but they do die. Oh, an infection goes up one. And one hit here. So that comes off in their, their depleted side. Uh, all right, we roll. <laughs> We're gonna get to use them for research maybe. One to three, they are in the graveyard, shoot. All right, we can't operate on the veterans of foreign wars for, for the sake of research. Uh, and they're retreated there. Uh, because it's brains, if they won, they would have kept going one more space, but because they didn't retreat, they didn't win. The uh, winner is whoever doesn't retreat. Uh, all right, coming around here, we have two versus four. That is a times two human advantage with plenty of column shifts, so it's times three human advantage. Uh, move infection up one. Five. Uh, 
Three hits on the zombies, one on the human. So that will flip. Oh, he is tough, right? I think he's straight up tough and not even just rugged. Tough. Each hit uh, on a one, two, three, he's hit normally on a four, five, or six, it is canceled. So first of all, the hits will kill these guys. But on a one, two, three, he is flipped. All right. Uh, and then coming on around. Now, these guys come in here. Uh, oh, okay, I was going to say, this is a brains action. If they win, then they're going to advance in here and the game is automatically over. But because we have the Clarion Courier in play, someone is going to get to defend this last spot. So, all right, that adds a point of infection. Uh, it's even. We don't get this double shift because these guys leap. So it's just straight up equal. That is not good. That is not good at all. Five. All right, one hit to the zombies, two to Daryl. And Daryl retreats. So watch this. Uh, Daryl is rugged, not tough. Um, on a five or six, he shrugs off damage. And if he has to make a saving throw, he can roll twice and choose the better, uh, the, the, the better result. So, all right. So here's of the two hits he's taking. Here's one of them. He does not shrug that off. Here's the other one. He shrugs that one off. Uh, this is another thing about these Grand Austria Hotel dice, is they're super light. <laughs> if if there had been any additional weight on this thing, I don't think this whole rule about stacking to see if the die is cocked or not would be working out very well in my favor. Uh, all right, so he endures that. He then retreats. Now, it is a brains phase. Guess what? These guys get to move again. Normally, the game would be over, but because we have the Clarion Courier in play, I can choose a defender. The defender will, of course, be Daryl. Unfortunately, Daryl doesn't get the terrain shift. So this is a straight up human advantage, five to four, uh, no bonuses there. If we have to retreat and he comes into here, I've lost the game. The game is over. This could suck. All right, uh, and just looking it up, only on a four or lower am I gonna retreat. Oh, seriously? <sighs> Stupid leapers. Oh, I hate leapers. That is so rude. Daryl, come on. You are our last hope. <laughs> uh, all right. So Daryl's ferocity went into play where he goes from strength four to strength five for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, the leapers. So let's just follow it through and do the scoring. So I rolled a four, even though it was a human advantage. So three hits to Daryl. Uh, and he retreats. One hit to these guys. Uh, did I actually advance that again? So Daryl's going to get three hits. On a five or six, he shrugs it off. He shrugs that one off. Two more hits. He shrugs that one off. He's worth a point is why I'm rolling. He does not shrug that one off. All right, let's see if he goes to the hospital, in which case he's still worth a point. Uh, with Daryl, because he is, what is it called? Uh, lucky when Staub makes, Staub, his name is Daryl. When Daryl makes his saving roll, he can roll two dice and choose the better outcome. Well, neither of them matters. He goes to the graveyard. All right, so then these guys come in here. They are in the town center of the game and the game is over. So how do we score this? Do I just chalk it up to a loss and uh, play again? Uh, yes, partly, but let's look at our score. So the way you do that is you take off the board everybody who is uh, either a, a civilian unit, a human unit, a refugee, anybody not in the graveyard. I'm just going to stack them up over here. So we can see here are the graveyard denizens, a couple of civilians, the VFW is dead. We lost two groups of refugees. Agent Wright and Daryl uh, died. So we have Mr. Johnson. Oh, that was supposed to come off at some point. Uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, these two red diamond security guards, doesn't matter if they're wounded. We have three of the five civilians. Two of them are dead. We have three, actually this is not bad, refugees who survived. Uh, we have Agent Zeno. We have Mayor Hernandez. Oh, we have these civilians. What is it? 
Why are there six? Oh, there are five villages that get civilians and then one in the middle. So we've got four regular civilians. We have the Clarion Courier, NWEZD, and oh, the veteran of the foreign wars are dead. We have Professor AG. Oh, we're going to do more research. We came so close to getting super weapon parts or the antidote. Uh, is there anyone I'm missing? No. All right. Each of these... Uh, yeah, he, does he count? Actually, let me look and check the score and see if Elwood Bear, Bear counts. Uh, all player units on the map, Hero Civilians, National Guard. Uh, oh, add the supply and ammo markers if you had two or more of that resource. Uh, yeah, so we add this one because we had more than two. We don't add ammo. Uh, add the antidote or super weapon components if they were in play. Uh, no, that was not researched. We just found the plant. Uh, add the infection marker if infection is six or lower. No. Uh, and then three points for villagers or refugees. So these are going to be our positive points. I'll just put this piece of paper here. Uh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, plus nine. So that gives us 21 positive points. Don't think I'm going to beat my score of eight. Now we subtract from this uh, one point for uh, each chaos marker in play and each card that we didn't resolve. So normally there's 12, there's four left here, so we know there are eight chaos markers in play. And cards that are left, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oops. There is my score. <laughs> so at least it's a positive number. I made two points uh, this game. My record, as I said, is eight, uh, but two points, I will take it. Uh, it's not a negative value, so I, f I consider that not the moral victory I would have made if I'd got more than eight points, but still a victory. Eh, not quite a victory. Not, let's not call it a victory. Not as bad a loss as it could have been. <sighs> well, that happened. Uh, <laughs> Uh, sorry I couldn't bring you a victory, but I figured two points is better than one point, better than zero points, way, way better than negative points. So I uh, appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed this video, and Lord knows if you've made it this far, I, I presume you did, uh, I'd be much obliged if you'd check out my Patreon page at uh, patreon.com slash tomchick. Uh, subscriptions to this channel are much appreciated. As far as the little uh, thumbs up, I also uh, appreciate those. Thank you so much for watching, uh, and I'll see you at the next one of these I do.